Hello and welcome back to the Last Greenhorn Show. We're continuing off where we left left off on the PS2 collection. Uh, I, I do want to give an update to saying that uh, the reason I take quite a while to upload these videos is uh, I don't got great internet speed and it takes hours to upload a video. And I do share my internet with other people, so I when I, I upload, I have to sh have to do it in a designated time where it doesn't I mean, bug other people when they're using the internet. So that's why usually I record on the weekends and then I upload on on the weekdays. That way everyone's at work and I can upload it when no one's home really. So not that's out of the way and hopefully I, uh, people understand. It's just how things are. I have no control over it. But continuing off with the collection where we last left off, which was Fable, Fatal Frame 2. And that is Fatal Frame 3. Like I said in the other video, I yet to play 2 and 3. I played a little bit of the first one. I, so I don't know nothing about this game. Uh, this is brand new. I was able to get a brand new copy of this one. Hopefully the stack doesn't fall over on me this time. Moving on to Final Fantasy, what was it, 12? Yeah. Final Fantasy 12 is the collector's edition. I just wish it didn't have that ding. But um, it's not my most favorite Final Fantasy out there. But I wanted this one really bad because I love... because. Anybody who gets this really needs to get this version because it comes with the DVD, like a history of Final Fantasy back when it really started. And there's the back of it. This is the metal casing, I'm sure you can tell. It's not my most favorite Final Fantasy out there. And it's still got, I still prefer it over like Final Fantasy 13. But uh, I want to point out that there is room, uh, I have heard that they're doing an HD remake of this game. So maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't 100% sure. Just keep an eye look out. So. I don't know what the heck that was. There's like some stain on it. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, well, let me do something real quick. Uh, uh, sorry. Moving on to Prop Missions 4. There it is. Now, I have the first one, which is a really good game. I haven't really sat down and played it, but my brother really sat down and played it. He really, really enjoyed it. At the back of it, which is uh, Front Missions 3, which if you want to see it, it is in my PS1 collection, but there's the front of it. This is the only two that's ever gotten released in the, the US. That's the tactical base, the original base. Uh, uh, they did release one of the next gen, uh, la previous consoles, but that was more of an action shooter. I don't think it was turn based tactical. But yeah, these are the only two. The other two were Japan uh, on the, SNE, uh, the Super Nintendo. And they never released into the U.S. I think they do have an English translation for a few of them, but I, I don't don't quote me on that one. I'm not 100 percent sure. But yeah, I haven't really ever played. I haven't really played them, but they definitely seem like they they're good because they're made from Square Enix. I don't know if you know that back when Square Enix, but um, back when they were still doing really really turn based games before they went to more of an action pack games. But I won't get into that. But uh, next going on is um. Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Collection. I just saw this and I was like, this seemed like a worthy pickup. Oh, sorry, I've already seen that one. It comes with Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Which, if you would like to see, the cover arts are all the same, about the same. I think the back arts are different though. They're like all the same looking. I don't think that's the original back art covers. But yeah, they came with all the, the, the ma maps and all that stuff with them, so. Now, anybody knows me, I'm not a big fan of Grand Theft Auto games. I find them kind of boring, but I do think they're a fun game to pop in occasionally, and it's nice when somebody does have it, you do have the collection, and somebody likes to play it. So, that's basically what I got it for, is is sometimes it's nice just to pop one of these kinds of games in. I don't see how everyone can dedicate a lot of time to it, but uh, I'm, I saw it, and it was like, I got it for like, like 20 bucks. So, yep. Yeah. Like I, said, I didn't have a Grand Theft Auto for the longest time. I, I don't even have the newest one out. I don't really care for it. Now, I remember this when I got this uh, when I was younger. and Man, this was actually my first one. I didn't play the other first two. And that is Gran Turismo 3. Yeah, I didn't originally play the original Gran Turismo games when they first released. Uh, I, I wasn't until the PS2 version here that I got it. And I was blown away by it. I was addicted to this game. I could not put it down when I first got it. It's still an amazing game to this day. I still pop it in and play it. It's still as fun as heck. I love the dirt rally in this game. For some reason, they still haven't. They didn't capture it anymore. The, the dirt rally in Gran Turismo 3 is still like flawless in my book. Like 
I can still pop it in and play it, but now that the newer iterations of it don't captivate me very much. But yeah, Gran Turismo 3, to some people are saying it is the last best Gran Turismo game. Now, whether it's the best, I don't know, but I do agree that the newer Gran Turismos, past definitely 4, have been very disappointing. To the point where if you're going to play anything of that, like a simulator racer, your best bet would probably be to go for uh, Forza Motorsport 4. Now, a lot of Sony people are going to be upset about that, but it's the honest truth. I will get to my 360 collection here in a little bit, but uh, if you're going to play that, I'd recommend you go for the Forza series until they can probably get their act together, get their act together on the newer one, the newer ones coming out here soon. But till then, even Gran, Tur uh, Gran Turismo 3 still comp beats compares to games like Forza Motorsports. So that tells you a lot right there of how good this game was made, and it still is. Moving on to Gran Turismo 4. Now, I did get rid of my Gran Turismo 3 a long time ago to get this game. And this is where um, they really started focusing on, on realistic simulator racing. Where Gran Turismo 3 still had the arcade feel. It still had, like, as I like to say, Gran Turismo forgot to be fun. That's just the honest truth. They became so dedicated to realism, to the intricates of everything being to the precise of realism. And which, I mean... I guess you can expect that from a simulator. That's what you want. But when we play video games, we want it to be fun. That's that's the first thing you want it to be. Any game you design has to be fun. There's I don't understand when people say, well, man, uh, that well, it's fun. This beats over its flaws. To me, a game has to be already fun. It does not benefit from itself from being, man, man that say well, it's more funner than other games. Well, every game's supposed to be fun. It's like you go to a movie, you expect to be entertained with a movie, you don't expect to be bored. It's already supposed to be that. So that's why I think Gran Turismo is slacking a little bit in Gran Turismo 4. Yes, this really brought in a niche market of the people who really love cars, but don't I guess don't have a car that they can do it in real life. But I still say Gran Turismo 3 is better than 4, but Gran Turismo 4 is definitely still actually better than 5 and 6. Because 5 and 6 are just terrible. I mean, they're terrible games. Now, compared to these two, yeah, they don't even hold a candle to them. Yeah, they might be visually prettier, but graphics don't mean anything. And here's another one game, uh, Half-Life. Now, I did say in my Half-Life, which I know I have I, in my Let's Play of that, uh, the remake. I haven't played Half-Life. I actually haven't even really started playing the remake of that. And I'm not a big fan of the... Uh, Half-Life's controls and the schemes of it, but I understand a lot of people were actually really, really fond of this game, and they have great memories of it. Now, I didn't grow up playing this game, but um, actually, what, what little I played of it and everything, I can see why people love it and everything. I Me, mean, it's just a game to me now. That's what I say. Some of these games, you just had to be there. That's kind of like how the Fatal Frame game. When you come into it now, it's like, you could see why people loved it, but you don't understand why they loved it. And what if I guess you can say understand. I, you, I'm sure you see what I'm trying to get at. You get what I'm getting at. <laughs> it's just, I wish I was there. Some of these games, I really, really wish I was there. Because then I would have fully under grip the, the meaning of this game. But yeah, man, I haven't played it and everything. And it still seems like a good game. And I'm still proud to have it part of my collection. And anybody should have Half-Life in their collection. Just due to the sheer popularity. But uh, here's a rare game. And it's becoming harder and harder to find. And that is... Hunting Grounds. Uh, hunting Ground. Sorry, I always put an S to it. But um, this is actually a survival horror made from Capcom. It's kind of like a, a, I guess, a spiritual successor to uh, Clock Tower. I don't know if you know about that game, which is a game I do need to get. I don't have it, as you can plainly see, because I'm up to H's and I already passed through the C's. But here's the inside. This is actually a really good survival horror game. It's got a gripping story, an interesting character, interesting dynamics. And it's, it's definitely one of those underrated, or not underrated, but overlooked survival horrors. Uh, excuse me, sorry. And you really got to take the time to look for it if you can, because it's really starting to get hard to find. I mean, this right here was already, this is getting up to like $100 just to get one of these. They, they, they're getting pricey to get, get a hold of one. So if you see one, pick it up. Even if it's just the disc, I still recommend p try to pick it up. If you find a complete pleat box, you, you get that. Moving on, now, I don't play a lot of sports games. I just 
don't. I, mean, I play a very, very slim view. If I play a sports game, I want it to be creative or cartoony or maybe have some spin to it. If it's just like play baseball or just regular football, I understand why people get into it. I just, I don't. I just would prefer to do it in real life. I, I like playing baseball in real life. I love playing baseball. But I don't find it too much fun to do it in real life. And But to get to the point, is a uh, hot shot golf. Now, I don't really care, or hot shot golf for, should I say. I don't care about golf. I'm not something that I'm interested in. But playing hot shot golf is amazing. It's one of the most fun I could ever have in a sports game. I, I play these games for hours on end, man, and it's great playing with friends and family. I mean, my family still gets together and still likes to sit down and play Hot Shot Golf. I, they did announce the PlayStation 4. They have a new game called Hot Shot Golf coming out on PS4. I'm super stoked for that because I thought they weren't going to make any more. Because the last one they made was um, Hot Shot Golf Out of Bounds. It was, in, yeah, Out of Bounds on the PS3. The last one was uh, uh, Hot Shot Golf World... Uh, World Tournament or something like that on the PS Vita and it didn't get a physical release on the PS3 and I was really disappointed about that. But yeah, Hot Shot Golf 4 is still an amazing game and I still hold on to it and play it because I like the characters, I like the courses, I like everything about it. And I like Hot Shot Golf, it's one of my most favorite sports games. Moving on, here's another game that I was super stoked to get in such a great condition and that is Jade Cocoon 2. Now, this is definitely one of those kinds of games, if you know of Digimon and Pokemon. Now, I don't play Pokemon, but I play Digimon games, and I just love it. And this is awfully like a Digimon and Pokemon game, but it's definitely got, I mean, it's not as, like, expanded in popularity. But this is the last Jade Cocoon. They don't make, they don't have any more that I'm aware of. And it's still a great game. I mean, uh, the first one... Uh, I don't know if you care to see these the classic ones because you can see the classic ones on my classic video But there's the first one right there. It's definitely a, a different mix of games because if you play the first one and the second one they're, they're actually totally different kind of games, but they're still Jade Cocoon. I'm sure you can understand what I'm meaning by that uh, Yeah, I try to chill find Jade Cocoon too because it's still a great game to play on your PS2 And I was super stoked to get one in such a great condition. I mean it is really good condition But there's the inside. I don't know if I showed you but yeah, Jake Cocoon 2, uh, I loved it, and I do believe the voice actor, the kid in, the, uh, in that game, is the same voice actor as Laharo. So when I heard that, I was I had a big smile on my face, because, God, I love the Laharo's voice. Now, um, here's um, Jack X, the combat racing, which, you probably wonder why I have this one and not the other ones, because, to me, I don't see no reason to uh, own the PS2 versions when I already own the PS3 HD remake of them. So I figured, hey, man, that gives me more space on my shelf to put other PS2 games on. But this didn't get a physical release at any point. There's the back of it. It's a great racing game or kart racing game, and it's I'd say it's one another really hardly or really hugely overlooked racing game. Man, like I said, PlayStation releases a lot of great games, and a lot of them get ignored. This is actually a really good kart racing destruction derby kind of thing game. So. Check it out if you can, I mean, if you really should. If you're a big fan of Jack, because I know a lot of people have been waiting for another Jack and Dexter game, and we just haven't got one. But yeah, that's a good supplement if you want something. Now here's a game that I, <laughs> I remember when I seen it when I was, it was like one of the PlayStation 2's like big titles that they were releasing when it was like one of their exclusive titles, and that, I might not pronounce this right, and that is Kinetica, Kinetica, I think I'm saying that right. Kinetica. It's a weird, weird racing game where you're like, like human bodies and you're like driving up buildings and stuff like that. And you have like a tank and you have, they're like motorcycles, but you, you, your body is the motorcycle. It's really a weird game, but it's actually a lot of fun. And it's actually, it's, it's interesting, but it does have a good learning curve on it. It, you, you definitely got to master it. But I actually look at this game as a kind of like a, their attempt to make a spiritual successor to Jet Moto because they didn't made a Jet Moto. Uh, it's not from the same company of three four three uh, three eight three eight 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 nine eight studios. I think it is. It made Jet Moto. But yeah, it's a good game. I I, I won't say I I'd, I'd say get Jack X before that. Moving on. Now this is actually starting to get kind of hard to find, and that is. Kingsfield the Ancient City. This is a uh, uh, if you don't know, Kingsfield is the uh, 
creators from uh, from some from software. This is Kingsfield was the original Dark Souls and Demon Souls, or Bloodborne, however you want to look at it. They were the uh, Demon Souls was the spiritual successor to Kingsfield, and Dark Souls was the spiritual successor to Demon Souls. It's very convoluted. But yeah, if you play this, you can actually feel the Demon Souls, Dark Souls feel, and it's really easy to die. Yeah, I am really dedicated a lot of time. I have played a lot of the first and second one, but for some reason when I finally got a hold of this, I just, I guess I played so many Souls games, I just haven't got around to playing it. But yeah, it, it's, I remember I tried to play it, I literally died like in 10 seconds in the, the beginning of the game. Because there's like some lava drop. It's, it's that quickly. There's a trap, not even 10 seconds when you're in the game, and you just die. You just fall into some lava. I, it just, it cracked me up because it just made me laugh because it made me think of Demon Souls and Dark Souls. It's like, yeah, this is from software. Because <laughs> I, it just cracked me up. They like, 10 seconds, like five steps. Oh, you died. <laughs> now, here's a game that I didn't have a connection with, but man, when I played the first one, it was amazing and I had to have, I almost got like all of them now. And that is Klonoa. Klonoa 2, uh, Lupinia's Veil. Vale. I fell in love with Klonoa. Uh, I didn't have any connection with Klonoa. I didn't mean anything to me uh, until I played the original first one, which I, I didn't get the first one until way later, which is right here, the original first Klonoa. It's really rare to get a hold of the first one. If anybody knows that, man, it's really, really hard. I'm super glad to have a copy. Klonoa, too, Klonoa blew me away. It is up there to me with Sonic and Mario. I when I popped in Klonoa, I could not stop playing it. I had to beat that thing till I was mastered it. And then I played Klonoa 2. Isn't as good as the first one, but still amazing experience. If you love Klonoa games, or you like uh, platforming games of any kind, you have to play Klonoa. You have to, because it is one of the most overlooked, underrated, unappreciated, one of the best mascots I have ever seen in a game. And... I, I, I don't, anybody who's played this, there's a certain button you can press. I think it's like R2, and he, Klonoa will make the sound, oopa doopa. It, I press that button like all the time because it sounds so adorable. But uh, they actually did a remake on the Wii of the original first one. I, I don't know if anyone knows that. It is a remake of the original first one. And I will get to my Wii collection uh, at some point too. But um, So there's a lot of available uh, ways you can play Klonoa, and it's on handhelds. There's a few of them, I think, on the Game Boy Advance. I think it's on Game Boy Advance. So you gotta really try Klonoa. I, I, you have to play Klonoa because it's so wrong how overlooked that title is. Now I get upset when you see like everyone talking about Sonic and Mario and Crash Bandicoot and Jack and Dexter. Klonoa, dirt. I want another Klonoa before our Jack and Dexter and Crash Bandicoot. That's how serious I am. Man, I love Klonoa. And here's a game I didn't even know it had a sequel until way later in my life. And I was always bummed out because it didn't have a sequel. And I might be pronouncing this wrong, but Legia 2 Dual, uh, Dual, Dual Saga. Yeah, I, I did not know there was a sequel to this. Uh, I don't know if you, everybody's ever played Legend of Legia, which uh, I do have. There's the back of it. Which is uh, right here if you want to see the first one. Like I said, if you ever want to look at my PS1 collection, I do have videos up with it. Now, I don't ha I have been getting a lot more new titles, so I probably need to like, show you all my new titles on my PS1. But uh, basically, Legend of Legia is um, basically combining fighting game with RPG. You basically have like punch left arm, punch right arm, li left kick, and right kick. And you put these buttons and you attack, and you act with the command. Like, let's say you have a attack bar, and you say, kick, kick, punch, punch. Well, your character will run up there, kick, kick, punch, punch. And if you put, like, kick, kick, punch, punch, kick, punch, you would do, like, a super combo attack. And you got to learn all these combos, attacks, and maneuvers. It's a very unique experience if you've never played it. Because there's, I don't know any other RPG that works like that. So, and, uh, which is exclusive to uh, PlayStation 1. And this, the second one I only know is on the PS2. So, I haven't really played the PS2 version. I did pop it in for a little while, and I played it. And I died in the tutorial. I that's, I was very disappointed with myself on that. But uh, I was really glad to get such a good copy of it. I don't know if anybody, pretty many people appreciate this game. A lot of people say it's not as good as the first one, which I have no comparison. I don't know. But I do know that I, I like it. I, what I've, little bit I've played of it, I like, I like it so far. Moving on. Two games that are getting extremely rare. And if you can find it, which 
sadly, I was really stupid and I got rid of them. And I really loved them. And I got rid of them for some reason. And uh, I regretted it and I had to find them again. And uh, I might be pronouncing this one wrong. And which this one's got a weird case. And that is Metachroma. Clamaya. Uh, Clamaya. Uh, sorry. Alchemist of Al Reeves. It, it, yeah, that's how that's how the case is. You hold it up, it's it's on the sideways. It's really weird. This game blew me away. I was blown away so much by this game. This is like I was telling you back in my other video. I was explaining how um I was experimenting with newer games that I never would have probably bought in my life. And then I saw these games and I mean, I got like them back when they were like cheap, cheap, like twenty bucks, maybe even less than that. And this is probably the best battle music I have ever heard for a turn-based RPG. It is amazingly good battle music. I'd, I'd show you right now, right now, uh, if I could. I just edit it in there. I'm, who knows? I might do it. Let's, let's see. But um, it's that amazing of battle music, especially the Waverian, which I don't think it's this one. I think it's the second one. But um, yeah, they're getting really hard to find. The, the first one is a little easier to find. But the second one is the rarest one. So... It's basically you're you're it's like if you ever play Persona, you're like in a school and you do exams and schools and stuff like that. But instead of like Persona where it's kind of be realistic, it's this is like a fantasy world where your 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 school is like main fantasy world where they're sending you to do experiments in alchemy. It's actually a really good turn base and it, it's one of those other games that I'd say that RPGs that gets overlooked by games like Dark Cloud and Final Fantasy X. You gotta try this game out. If you can get a hold of it, I really, really recommend it. Now, here's the rarest one, and that is Manakaima 2. Uh, sorry, uh, Fall of Alchemy, which it's starting to get up there. It's starting to get really, really hard to find a copy. Why I'm disappointed with myself, this game used to come with a poster and uh, of inside the casing, and uh, since I got rid of my copy, I actually went back, like, not even a couple months later, I was like, what the hell was I thinking? I went back there, and somebody bought it, and I haven't seen it back up there at my mom, uh, my, at my games, game store. So disappointed with myself with getting rid of that, because I'm a big collector of those kinds of things. I like to hold on to those kinds of things. But yeah, this is a good one. This is amazing. This one, you can actually play as a male or female. You can either choose between her or him. I like playing him the most. But I actually, I like playing both. They're both unique experience. You definitely got to play them both because they're both like entwined in their stories. It's it's really a unique experience in that field. Same thing, name schooling and everything. The battle music is amazing. I might edit it in the video. I don't know. I just want to show you the music because it's so amazing. But uh, but I also don't want to get uh, flagged or whatever. But yeah, check out check them out if you can. But they're getting expensive. Uh, they're getting really really expensive. Now, these kinds of games, those, which is weird, those RPGs, those JRPGs and stuff like that, if you can find one, you might want to think about getting it because JRPGs definitely rise up in price. Even when you look at it and they find out it's like they're selling it for like 5 to 10 bucks, game companies like Ness America and stuff like that and Atlas, they do small runs of their games. They don't make like, like Naughty Dog and stuff like that and Bioware. They don't make big, big... T uh, release titles of their they do lots of prints so just because you find it cheap now later on it's going to be super hard to find a copy because every collector is going to be picking them up and playing it so if you're just curious to play it and you come across it you better pick it up now because when you finally are going to be interested in playing these kinds of games they're going to cost you out the ass so really take that in consideration now here's another game that uh as I said back before my con collection, I really love ghouls and go super ghouls and goblins. And here's a kind of a spiritual successor to that, and that's Maximo, Ghost to Glory, Ghost to Glory. It's basically a Capcom's attempt to re like reboot almost Ghosts and Goblins with a new title. It's kind of like Double Dice with a new name and everything like that, but it's got like the feel and ideals of Ghosts and Goblins. And it's a hard platform game. When you play it, you don't think it's going to be too hard because it looks very, very cartoony and cheesy in its own way. But it's actually a really hard game. Really, it's really hard like Ghosts and Goblins. The Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Goblins and Super Ghouls and Goblins. There's, there's so many of them. But uh, really good game. Just hard as hell. If you're looking for a platformer that's going to make you just want to throw your controller because it is hard. So, yeah, check it out. I don't think it's as good as Super Ghouls and Goblins or even Ghosts and Goblins. But it's still, I mean, 
a good game to play. And there's a sequel to it, and that's Maximo's Army of Zen, which I haven't really played this one too much because I haven't even really beat the first one yet. Because, like I said, it just doesn't interest me as much as Super Ghouls and Goblins. Yeah, I really hate stickers on my covers. I really got to get new covers, casings for this. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's pretty much the same. Then you're on your quest, then difficulty is really up there. There's not much I can explain, I'm sorry. If, I, if, if I'm going to recommend anything, you should play Super Ghouls and Goblins. Always play Super Ghouls and Goblins. Now, this is like I get, like I said in my other video, that PlayStation 2 has a lot of these, and that's a main reason you want to hold on to a PS2, just because you can just easily buy these. And that is Mega Man Anniversary Collection. This has comes with the 10 classic PS... Uh, I mean, yeah, oh, original uh, Mega Man games. And it has some extra ones in there, like some of the other titles that were not like released in America and stuff. But, uh, what was I getting at? Uh, it, it, it's got a great collection. This is where I played a lot of my Mega Man games, because I didn't have... I didn't. I had a few Mega Man games when I was growing up. When I had the NES and Super NES, we just haven't didn't have them all. Cause like I said, there's ten of them. <laughs> so, but yeah, they're really hard games and they're really fun. And like I said this this is the main collection you want to buy on the PS2 because there's just they don't release these now. They do or they are releasing a Mega Man Classic Collection like this on the PS4 here soon, and it's getting a physical copy release. But I don't think it has as many games, and it they're charging like really out the ass for it when you can get this for almost pretty dirt cheap so and you can almost get it on anything like it's on the gamecube i think it's on the xbox original xbox and it's on a ps2 so and as i was just saying about the collection there's also another amazing one that's Mega Man x collection which again comes with like seven games in one seven of the x Mega Man x games now i really love Mega Man x that's where i really got my love for Mega Man. But, uh, and this actually comes with other games, too. So it comes with more than just the seven titles. It comes with, like, some art cart racer and stuff like that. Which, that's why I think that it was disappointed with the Mega Man collection on the PS4. Because you got a PS4 disc thing. That's a Blu-ray disc. It's like a dual layer can hold 50 gigabytes. I'm sure you could have fit, name all the original Mega Man games and the Mega Man X games. You probably didn't have to put the gold cart racing and all that stuff. But you definitely could have at least put... Mega Man X games on there. Just make one compilation of all the Mega Man games. Now that would have been intriguing, but we're talking about Capcom here. Moving on. Now I remember when this was a like total niche now before it became really, really popular. Almost like the Dark Souls and Kingsville. Kingsville was not really popular until it hit Demon Souls. And Demon Souls wasn't that big until it hit Dark Souls. But that is Monster Hunter. Yeah, original Monster Hunter first originally released on the PS2. And it exploded in popularity later on. Basically, it wasn't too big on consoles. It got really big on handhelds. And, and I'm sure you're aware, aware, a good well aware of that. And I, I, I'm not a big Monster Hunter fan. I, I, I try to play it. I try to, but it's, a, it's very taskful. And I just, for some reason, can't get into it. Now... I would love to see a full HD, like, actual PS4 and Xbox the Xbox One or something like that game. I'm tired of seeing handhelds version. I would love to maybe see a full-fledged open world, kind of like Skyrim or something like that. And I don't even like open world games, but I think Monster Hunter would benefit the most out of being an open world game. So... Because I just don't find I find it boring. But Monster Hunter, I could see it from finding, fighting dynamic monsters and dinosaurs and then dragons and whatever, monkeys, whatever the case may be. And then gathering up the furs and putting up armors and stuff like that. But at best, I'd see they're going to probably make an MMO on console. That's what I actually see the quickest is going to be happening with Monster Hunter. Because it's such a group game. It's such an online game. You get together and you... Plan up a plan and attack a monster. It's basically an MMO in its own right. It's just not an MMO. Because man, there's some dinosaurs and monsters and creatures in that. It's almost impossible to beat by yourself without without some good team to back you up. Now, if you can't beat them, then more power to you. But I'm just saying. Now, here, like I said, a lot of the collection stuff. That's why I like PlayStation 2. And that is the uh, Namco Museum Anniversary. 50th anniversary collection, which comes like Pac-Man and then Galaga, Dig Dug, and just I mean, so many other classical games. Like I, I, I personally got this for Pac-Man, Dig Dug, and Galaga. I fucking love Galaga. <laughs> That's just the hard truth. I just 
Galagum Dig Dug. That's the main purpose I bought this, just so I can play those. So, it, I'm sure you've known all these games, and they're really classical, and they look great. And Like I said, these are the reasons you want to hold on to PS2, because there's so many of these collections. So many! I don't even have them all, because there's so many of them out there. Now, I remember this game when it first released, and we got it, and it we just we fell in love with it. And it's still, to my best... To my opinion, the, the best out of everything that's ever been coming out ever since. And that is Need for Speed Underground. The original first one. Here's the inside. I, yeah, I know the disc isn't a greatest hits one. Yeah, I know. But uh, I need to get that fixed at some point. There's the back of it. My family fell in love with this. My brothers and sisters could not stop playing this. Now, we just constantly customize our cars, customize the building, and doing races. Now... See, this is why I actually say not every game needs to be open world, is my, my Need for Speed Underground, the first one, is not open world. It's track based. I actually enjoy that concept. I do enjoy open world as well. I just, I'm getting tired of everyone thinking that every game has to be open world. Now, it's like the whole uh, Forza Horizon and Drive Club. Now, everyone was sitting there dry, digging on Drive Club because it's open world. And to be honest with you, I find Drive Club to be funner. Because I particularly like picking tracks and just doing a track. I don't like driving to every location and doing my track. Even if it's got teleporting. I mean, fast travel. I just just I want to pick the track and play it. <laughs> That's just what I want to do. I'd rather see them actually making a, a track and making it full detailed with all the intricates and perfections of one great track than seeing a generic, bland open world. And that's the problem I have with open worlds. But I, I, that's... I'm probably make a rant videos or something like that, talking about these things, but this is a collection video. But Underground Collection, I mean Underground, Need for Speed Underground is the best Need for Speed Underground ever. Just, just, just the best Need for Speed out there. If you haven't played it, you gotta play it. If you're a big fan of Need for Speed, what are you waiting for? Play Underground. Now, this one is at least still better than some of the ones they have come out with, and that is Need for Speed Underground 2. I don't think it's good as the first one, but this is like the this was like the first step into open world. And it was it blew me away when I was a kid, I admit that. I mean, first time I ever playing a racing game. I think it was the first time I ever played a racing game with the open world. And it was amazing. It was still fun, but I always went back and played the first one. I just loved the first one. And frankly, I love Mazda Miata. That's my most favorite car out there. And uh, these were the last two that I know that were you were able to pick the Mazda Miata as your first car. It is the, f the first underground and the second underground. It, Mazda Miata is my most favorite car out, out there. I love to own a Mazda Miata. But, uh, then great racing games. If you're going to play any of the Need for Speeds, play the underground games. And if you can't find the underground games, the next best contender would be Need for Speed Most Wanted. This is the Black Edition, which comes with like a bonus DVD of the making of the game and stuff like that. And it comes with um, like a bit bonus content on the disc, like extra car uh, co extra cars and stuff like that. And I think an extra mission or two here and there. But uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, thing, it was the first of its kind. And I know for a lot of people, when you had the your open world cars, cops chasing you, and they're really difficult to lose. I mean, I remember playing this a lot. This actually was a lot better than Need for Speed Underground 2. Uh, it's it's just, I didn't like the color palette in this game. I thought it was like always the same color, because I don't think I had a night and day in this game. Whew, I'm talking so much. Um, it's a great racing game, and the first three, uh, Need for Speed Underground, Need for Speed Underground 2, and Need for Speed Most Wanted are the best Need for Speeds of them all. Nay, they haven't released anything that's come, 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 come even a smidget too close to those three games, I would love to see him do an HD remake of all those three games. Oh, okay. And here's a game that uh, a lot of people highly recommend to me. I haven't sat down and played it. And I might be pronouncing the name wrong again. I'm sorry. Akuji Shadow King. People told me it's a, a, a Kuji, a Kuji. People told me it's like a, 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 a lot of a Tim Schafer game. Which, I don't know if you know who Tim Schafer is. Tim Schafer is the person who made Psychonauts and uh, Brutal Legends and uh, Grim Fandango and uh, Rise of the Tentacles, I think. I might be getting that name wrong. Uh, which they say is a lot. He didn't make this game, but they say it's like... Because he always makes weird and very, very off-the-wall kinds of games. And I played a little bit of it, and... It seems interesting. It definitely does. I, I do appreciate very intriguing and interesting games. Now, I haven't played it, like I said, because there's 
<laughs> haven't had the time. And it's just, like I said, I just, just, I want to play it, but a lot of people's recommended it to me, and I just want to sit down and play it. But I've been like, literally busy and doing certain things, and I really want to play other games that I mean, a lot of people recommend to me to play, too. Moving on. And I actually, uh, how I got this game was uh, I bought it for my brother for Christmas, and I actually, I know this sounds terrible, I bought it for my brother for Christmas so I could sit down at home and play his game, and then when it came Christmas, I give it to him. So my goal was to immediately beat this game before I gave it to him for his Christmas present. And that was Unamushia. I'm, I, I think Unamushia, the Warlords. I think I'm pronouncing that. I'm, I, I'm probably butchering it again. I'm terrible at that stuff. And if no one knows, Unimichia, which again, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, uh, was going to be Resident Evil. They were actually going to try to make a Resident Evil, like a Japanese style Resident Evil, was going to take place in Japan, like old time Japan and everything. And it was such a drastic change to, to Resident Evil that they just got to the point where they decided to make it its own game. And that spawned this. That's why it feels like a play Resident Evil game. It's got tank controls, stick cameras, and you just set up a gun, you're using a sword. It's a great game, and I heard heard that they ha might be attempting to make another one, and that's great news because they, they, they're these are really good games. They're really fun to play and overlook majorly. I enjoyed, I remember playing this when I was supposed to give it as a Christmas present. I remember sitting down playing it, enjoying every single second of it. Now, it's it's amazing game and I won't I, mean, I can't say to go out there and immediately buy it because a lot of people are not used to tank controls and I do think it makes this game play really hard due to the fact that you don't get the range you have to be like riddle close up to it with a sword but no it's still a great game I'm not dogging on this game one bit it's a great game and I hope they are they're going to continue with the story um, continue with making more of those because it does need a sequel well that's the end of that collection here I do got one more collection video to make uh, I'm hopefully I can still build up my PS2 games. Like I say, it's just name priorities, name where I want to spend money and everything, and what games I can come across and pricing. Because like, you can go almost get any game you want, but I mean, you, you're gonna be prepared to spend out your ass for them. But uh, thank you all for watching, and um, I appreciate you all taking the time and waiting for me to upload every video and everything. Like I said at the beginning of this, it's just, it's just Whenever I got the free time and the ability to make a video and share it with all of you. Now, I hope to do try to do more videos and stuff like that of other things if I just got the time. But, now, enough of me talking about this stuff. Now, hopefully you all stick around and watch my videos and everything like that. And I appreciate every single one of you who comment and talk to me and then share your thoughts. I mean, even if we don't agree with everything, and even if we have different point of views, that's perfectly fine with me. Now, we may argue, we may name feel different or something like that, but that's perfectly fine. Now, I, I, I enjoy a, a debate here and there. And there's nothing wrong with it to me in my book. But, yeah, thank you all for watching, and uh, I hope to see you all, guys. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye!